morning guys we are back on the van build today and we're going to be doing some pretty good stuff that we're going to need for winter so um first thing we're going to be doing today spin you around is we are going to be installing the diesel heater in the bench seat so i probably didn't really think about this before setting it up but let's have a look let's get this out so we picked up a vivo diesel heater off amazon so we're going to get that fitted under the bench seat We've also got the mattress for the bed at the back and we've also got the inverter so we're going to get all those three wired in today and then yesterday we ordered uh, cushions and the back for this bench seat as well so yes we're going to need to get cracking on um, some bits now but first things first let's get some heat because it is freezing in here. What I am going to need to do first is I'm going to need to fix this bench seat to the floor um, It is there's a little bit of a gap down the side there so I don't know if the keep a little bit of a gap I'm just trying to push it up but I need that to fix that to the floor and then also I've got that blue cable I need to wire in and hide somehow so yes let's get to fixing that in first so this is the box of tricks that you get with it so the first thing excuse my drill let's take that out one of the first things I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to find an exit point for the exhaust so I need to work out the diameter of that there is also an air intake as well which is this one's got a little filter on the side, but I'm not sure if that's meant to stay inside or outside, but I imagine with colder combustion that that would work better. And with it having a filter on it, I imagine it's meant to be outside, so I'll, um, I don't have to leave that inside. And then I have to cut one hole in the van. Hmm, let think about that one. So what I did to find my exit point there was I drilled a pilot hole through the bottom of the van. Um, and you can see that the um, the actual drill bit it's got plenty of room around it to get the air and the exhaust that's the words I'm looking for so yeah I'm going to drill that through the van now so that is the hole cut through for the exhaust now I don't think I'm going to bother doing one for the air intake I'm going to pull the air intake from the side I know it's probably not ideal but or should I? I don't know. We'll see. One thing just to remember with these diesel heaters is that these don't use the turret. So these just connect straight to the bottom of the diesel heater. Now if you are using an all-in-one like we are, I would recommend getting some of this stuff. So it's just an exhaust paste and what this will do is it will seal it. Um, and you also want to get a carbon monoxide alarm as well and keep it quite close to the diesel heater. Just make sure that when it's running that you are running it safely and it's not going to cause you any damage. So yes, I'm going to apply this paste now. So we've got this one on. I've had to take the fuel line off to actually get it to tighten down. But this is just going to run through the back. I think that should be fine because it's got a, it has got a hole for it to do that anyway. So I'm just going to put that fuel line to one side. Then what I'm going to do is smudge some of this exhaust paste around the outside of this, this tube here. And then I'm going to put some on the inside of the metal tube which is stuck under my toolkit at the minute. So yeah, we'll get that done and then get it clamped down. So that is all done and I've used the sealant on it. It's quite messy stuff as well, so it gets quite powdery. So what I've done here is I have I've sealed it all the way down, but I've actually put two Jubilee clips on opposite directions, so it shouldn't work loose. So I just need to get the fuel pump back in and then I can start running the wires for it and then we can uh, give it a go. What's up guys? I am working today. I'm just dying in the background of a cold. So Josh is doing the majority of the work today. But while he's fitting the diesel heater, I thought I'd just show you some exciting bits that we got yesterday. So yesterday we actually ordered the cushions for our bench seat. Um, you may have seen that, seen that I posted on our story asking for some tips. Um, if you made your own or if you are uh, asking for for recommendations of places to go and get them made and thank you very much to everyone that, that replied by the way um, we decided to have them made because we weren't confident in our own ability so um, we've gone to a place called Low Wards Furnishings and um, they're actually based in Leicestershire and in total we're paying £315 now that's for the bottom uh, bench seat bit cushion where our bums will go and then a back cushion as well um, and the material that we've gone for is this like it's like a chenille kind of fabric 
um, it's quite tough, rigid and also it won't pull because that's the other thing. We wanted it to be comfortable but it also had to be practical because we've got Millie. She has long claws that pull things so um, we wanted to make sure it wasn't anything that would pull and also wanted a nice kind of neutral colour as well that will go with everything which I think this will. So yeah, uh, happy with that. And then we also got some material. Now this was 1950 per metre, we've got three metres and this is to make our blinds out of. Um, so as you can see it's like a check print with kind of like a mustardy colour running through it and I think this will look really nice, um, yeah I'm happy with that. When we first saw it we weren't sure whether we should go for the bench seat in it but yeah just decided to go for the, the blinds in it. I think they'll look really really lovely when they're done. Um, but now I need to learn how to make blinds so that's going to be <laughs> my next job reading up how to make them. Okay Josh thinks it's about go time with the diesel heater so um, let's go out and hopefully he can get it working because we've had a bit of a mare with it this morning but as you know nothing is ever straightforward in van building so <laughs> I don't know why we expected anything less but yeah fingers crossed it's gonna work come on let's go see. Right here we go guys we think <laughs> we're operational. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, it's going. Um, that's. <laughs> Can you see the smoke that's coming out the back? Jesus. It should, I, it should clear off. I've seen it's it. It's not on fire, is it? God. Is that normal? Bloody hell. It smells hot. Oh yeah, there's warm air coming out of it now. But that, <laughs> that smoke seems weird. It's because it's been priming, that's why. Well, yeah, I suppose it's because it's its first use as well. But it does seem to be clearing up now a bit, actually. Also, we've got our uh, little carbon monoxide alarm working as well because, uh, you know, safety and all that. <laughs> Don't want to die in the van just trying out the heater. <laughs> Josh is just making sure that we're not on fire or anything. Oh, God, I tell you what, that is lovely and warm. That is so nice. So Oh, it's well nice to know, it's proper warm. Uh, Get yourself in front of that. It's quite loud outside. Is it? Yeah. Oh god, that is warm, isn't it? Yeah. It just, certainly does the job. How do you turn it down, then? I don't know. going to see how loud it is from the outside. <laughs> Sounds like when there's a distant train coming. Oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> mm. Josh has just cranked it up. He wants me to come back out. <laughs> see if I can hear any more. Well, it's certainly loud. Oh, it smells as well. Oh. <laughs> you have to run them. If you don't want them to, the things to clog up, you have to run them hot. Aye. So. Hot to the better then. Let's use some battery though, that has. Right, what are we on with now then? Inverter. Right. So.
to go and put my fleece on because I'm just bloody freezing. But what Josh is doing now is just cutting out a um, bit where the plug is going to sit in the bench seat. I'm having one at the front as well. Sorry if you can't hear me. That's what he's doing now, cutting it out. How go with it, Josh? Hmm? I'll have a go. Yeah. You'll, you'll have a go? No, there, there we go. It's not brilliant. Huh? And it's all marked to fuck as well, so it needs paint again. Um, you might be able to get those marks out with a magic, magic sponge. sponge. Yeah. Can you go and get the hoover for me, please? Yes. Magic sponge did the trick on those marks. And now it's time for the plug socket to go in. So again, to match the kitchen socket on the wall over there, we've gone for the um, polished uh, black nickel. It's called, isn't it? Which should look nice and smart. Why do they always use flathead screws? Like, who even uses flathead screws? I'm sure there's some reasons to why. So these are the screw plates that we've gone for, if you're interested, and um, we picked them, these up from... Um, B&Q? Uh, yeah, I think it was B&Q. If it wasn't B&Q, it was Wix, but I'm pretty sure it was B&Q. So yeah, it's the black nickel finish. I'll show you what it looks like now. There we are, that's it on now. So you can see it's it's like a shiny finish, but it's like not chrome. So it's, yeah, black nickel. <laughs> that's what it looks like. Okay, so now we're working on the inverter, which we've just bought. So it's a Renogy 2000 watt inverter. What are you looking at me for? <laughs> you're talking like you, you you think you know what it is. I do know what it is. Oh, Scooby Doo, have you? <laughs> Not a clue. Good morning, guys. It's back on the van time again. We cut off a bit abruptly last week um, because we were basically too tired, and uh, we managed to get everything set up. So we got the inverter put in last week and that is working. However, there does seem to be some power draw from somewhere. I can't work out what, it, what it's from. The inverter is switched off, it's on remote, but we're drawing power from somewhere because the battery is going down. But it does only look like it's, I don't know if that's telling me there's 0 0.2 amps on there or not. I need to have a look at what that is, but yeah, all the plug sockets are now working. Um, but I think I want to try and sort these wires out a bit better. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but whether it's a case of just stripping it all out again and trying to sort the wires out, I'm not sure. So we need to wire this remote switch in, but I think I just literally just turn it on. And then the fan kicks in down there. But we tested all the plug sockets, we've got one there, we've got one, oh, we've got one in there. And then we have one down there as well, and they're all working. So um, we ordered our fridge as well, so instead of us going for a 240 volt fridge, uh, a 12 volt fridge, we actually went for a 240 volt low wattage one. Now it doesn't actually use that much power, but they're obviously with having the inverter on that will use power. But for the amount we will actually use the fridge for, we won't. I don't think we'll use it much when we go wild camping. It'll be for more when we're camping on a site. So that is the reason why we've gone for that and um, it was a lot cheaper as well I think it was about £139 for a Russell Hobbs one and um, it should fit in there quite nicely it's quite a small fridge and um, so we'll get that put in at some point today we've also got some other things we need to do as well I need to sort this step up so I need to straighten this step up and pin these cables and then what else have we got I'm trying to think what we've got now oh we did have um they chased about the cushions, so when we actually put the measurements through for the cushions, we didn't take into consideration the thickness of the base foam. So it turned out that the, the back of the seat would come halfway up the window. So we had them adjust that, so it's literally the, the foam will just sit above this window frame here on the back piece. Um, and then we have ordered the sink and the hob. The sink's been lost in transit. They shipped it last Tuesday and there's been no scans on it, so... I've got to wait now till Wednesday next week before I can get a refund on that to get another one. The hob and the tap have arrived, but obviously I can't put the tap in, so we may put the hob in at some point this weekend. And then we also need to get another piece of wood to go under the bed, um, just to put another strengthening beam in there. 
and then we'll cut the mattress down to size for that. Um, but then I think we're pretty much, we're in a position where we can start to use the van once we get these seats. It's not necessarily we need to get these just yet, but hopefully they should be here within three weeks. So we can start using the using the van on campsites. We've got the the, um, the two foot hookup put in there, which basically, I don't know if I've explained it before. So once this inverter is running now, um, that is running off the 12 volt. As soon as you plug that into the 12 volt power, it goes down to the plug socket there, which then goes into the inverter. Sorry, it's out of focus, but that will then plug into the inverter and the inverter picks up that it's got 240 volt power coming through. So it uses, it basically switches it over um, and it's like a pass through feature. So all of my sockets will work. As soon as you disconnect that 240 volt, the sockets still work as well. So um, that was one of the reasons we wanted to go to the Renergy one. You can get a an inverter switch, these really Victron ones. Eventually we will look at doing that, um, but I think we need to probably have a look at sorting the wires out really. Oh, and then we need to get the kitchen shelves in as well. So there's quite a bit of work we've got to do this weekend. Videos are going to slow down, I think, going forward. Um, we're in a position now where we're, we're sort of getting into the really expensive stuff like the gas tanks and all the water in the boiler and stuff like that. So uh, the videos might slow down a little bit as we stop progressing, but we'll hopefully replace them with some sort of travel videos of some sort. So we do want to try and keep a video coming each week, but um, I'll stop rabbiting on now and I'll, uh, we'll get the cracking. One of the best perks about having this diesel heater now is we're coming the van today and it's absolutely freezing, it's 11 degrees. So we'll just crank it up and get some heat in there. Oh yes. Right, the hallway is an absolute tip, full of deliveries, but it's all exciting deliveries. So over here oh, we've got about that. we've got the tap in this box. I've already mentioned that. Okay. Well, and the hob. <laughs> and the hob in that box. Not that though. This is the splashback that we bought from Ikea. So it's that's the pattern that it's going to be. So it's like a marble effect. And then here is our lovely new fridge. So it's it's not a 12 volt one, is it? No, it's 240. I've already explained this. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, yeah. I'll take it, it when, back. We're going to use it when we're going camping. Let's see the inside of it then. Have you not shown the extra two editions we've got now? Yeah, we're uh, joined by some extra company this week, which uh, this one here is making my life hell. Waking up at two in the morning. Ah, here we go. Oh, I'm going to be able to have proper milk, not UHT milk. This is going to be an absolute game changer for cups of tea in the morning. I can't wait. Well, all that good stuff we said about the fridge has gone down the swanny because it's too wide for the gap. So it's, uh, yeah, we're going to have to sell it because we can't return it. Bummer. Okay, contrary to what Josh said earlier about the fridge not fitting, we've decided we're going to make it fit. We're not going to lose money again. So what we've done is just dismantled some of the bed frame. So we're going to have to rebuild some of that. And we're basically going to build it around the fridge because we don't want to pay £600 for a bloody Dometic fridge just to fill this gap, so... Well, we're never really going to use it, are we? That's the thing, right? Well, we are, but... We're putting it in it because it's, we, we didn't think we'd need it in the last one, but we just put one in because we thought it... Well, it's nice to have one, isn't it? It's nice yeah. to have the option, but yeah, this, it will work. <laughs> right, the fridge is in place, we've made it work. So Josh has put, like, a little framework around it at the bottom. Um, similar to what he did for the battery, it just kind of cases around it. We'll tidy that up at some point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not on the priority list. And then, I don't know if you can see it at the bottom here, maybe not. Maybe if I open the fridge. Just tilt it back, you'll be able to see it. So he's, he's drilled like little a little bracket in here. So when we're driving around, it will stop the fridge from like sliding out, coming out at the front here. So it's nice and secure. Um. And for anyone wondering, um, as you can see, it is a Russell Hobbs fridge that we've gone for, and it's a 240 volt, it's not a um, 12 volt. And where did you get it from, Josh? You can get them anywhere, Amazon. Some places sell them for 160, but you can get them for 120. Yeah, and it's a lot cheaper than the Dometic one, so. Um, it's, um, I think it's like 100 kilowatt hours per year, so that works out roughly 0.2 amps a day. Yeah. And then obviously you've got your, Inefficiency your inverter, so you're probably looking about. I don't know. I mean, is it 1.2 amps an hour on an inverter or something? Oh, I have no idea. 
but yeah it's a nice so, yeah. price a lot cheaper than the Dometic and we're always looking for things to save money aren't we definitely right we've decided we're going to call it a day while we're ahead with the fridge um so we'll see you again tomorrow and hopefully we can get this bed sorted out so we can finally use it Welcome back to another day guys and um, we started today off by just trying to sort out the step a little bit so I think the plan is to maybe put some wood along here just to conceal that metal bit just to neaten it up a little bit and then we've also uh, got the bed slice in place now so we're ready for a test drive on the bed the three stooges at the door. Hello! right under the bed so Josh has just made excuse me I've got the hiccups Josh has just made like a little fascia that we're gonna fix fascia. fascia that we're gonna fix onto here just so we don't see under the bed and it kind of boxes it off and finishes it off a bit more neatly oh what's this little thing this is the switch for the inverter now, do I want it there or do I want it in the middle? Let's put it... Let's, uh... So all being well, that should just slot straight into there now. No pressure. <laughs> there we go. It's like that. Huh? It's like that. The moment of truth doesn't fit in the gap. It doesn't fit in the gap. It's not wet. There we are. It's like this remote for <laughs> actually reaches now. Yeah, yeah, it looks good that does. Obviously I'll um, I'll just paint it white so it blends in with um, everything else, but yeah. Good job Josh. I've just made this little box that boxes off the bottom step. Just finishes it off a bit more so it looks a bit neater. Obviously I'm going to paint it white. Yeah, it looks a lot neater, that does. Right guys, excuse the mess in, in the living room because it's really bad at the minute, but we have unpackaged the mattress and we've taken the, um, I, don't, I don't know what you even refer to this as, like the, the top skin of it off. So we're just down to the bare foam now. So um, we're going to measure the length and the width and then cut it down accordingly. So wish us luck and... Uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get the measurements right and not uh, mess up a mattress. Trusty bread knife in action again. Oh, it's not even following the line, is it? Mm -hmm. 
Wow, 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 what do we have here? <laughs> what? You got sleeping on the job? <laughs> so we got the bed in. It was a bit of a pain getting this back on, this, the skin of it, but we got it on. Oh, and I have to say it's really, really comfy. So I'm, I'm I was going to say, let's have, can we have a discussion here that one, why is this bed wider than the one we've got in, upstairs in our bedroom? And two, why is it comfier? <laughs> I know. It's actually the same mattress as we've got in our bedroom, to be fair. It's just not as big. Yeah. It's the Dormio Silver. No, it's bigger. It's, uh, it's, no, I mean, it's, it's bigger, sorry. Yeah. It's the same mattress, though. It's the Dormio Silver. So, um, <laughs> just a reminder for anyone that doesn't know, this is actually a super king size. Um, <laughs> and the one that we have in the house is a double. So, I, I don't want to sleep in that anymore. I want to come sleep out here every night. This is the life. If only we had running water and gas, <laughs> and then we could just piss off to Europe. Mm. This mattress is amazing. I reckon we should just quit work now and just go. <laughs> Honestly, this mattress is so nice. Oh. Got a little light here. Get us blind, everyone. A little cupboard. What's going in that cupboard? I think we should put snacks in there. Oh, bedtime snacks. If anyone could open the I door. Put, put my phone on here at night. Oh, roll on, it being finished. <laughs>